welcome back to my channel today we're going to learn how to make a very beautiful cocoon cardigan i already have a first version if you would like to try it out uh, just check the link on the screen or in the description box below so today we're going to make another version of it and the materials that you will need are a pair of scissors a dunning needle a measuring tip mine is here and a five millimeter crochet hook and for the yarn, I am using fingering weight yarn and it's called Robin. It's 100% acrylic and I'm going to use a double strand. So if you have a DK weight yarn, please don't double your strand. Just go in with your DK weight, one strand, and use a 5mm crochet hook. You'll be able to achieve the same exact results. So I am using Robin 100% acrylic, but I'm using a double strand and I used about six balls approximately. So each ball is roughly 300 yards, each ball of the Robinian that I'm using. So the fact that I used two strands, I am still considering uh, 300 yards for those people who uh, actually three times three, 900 yards for the whole piece for those people who are using a single strand. But if you're using a double strand, then you're going to need a total of 1,800, approximately 1,800 yards of yarn. If you're using a yarn that needs to be doubled, but if you're using a single strand, approximately 900 yards. So let's round it off. You need 1,000 yards of yarn if you're using uh, one strand yarn and you need roughly 2,000 yards of yarn if you're using a double strand for your yarn. So I hope I'm clear on that. For all the other details, I'll be leaving all the details in the written pattern, which is also available on my uh, online shop. So let's get started. So the first thing that you're going to do is grab your yarn. And the fact that I am using a double strand, I've got to get two balls of yarn to start with and get my loose end. So let's begin. You're going to start off with a magic ring. And for a magic ring, for those who don't know how to do it, hold your yarn like this wrap it around your two fingers make a cross at the front insert your hook pull the working yarn and then you hold and then remove your fingers so this is a magic loop or a magic ring you're going to make a chain of one and this chain one just closes off the magic ring so that it's not moving around and then you're going to make a chain of three which counts as our very first double crochet then you're going to make a uh, two double crochets into the same magic ring which will create a total of three double crochets then you're going to make a chain of two and into the magic ring you're going to place three double crochets so for those who don't know what a double crochet it is in the u.s stamps you're going to yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop you have three loops on your hook i have six because i'm using a double strand so yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two that's a double crochet in the u.s terms so make two more double crochets to make a total of three double crochets after the chain two space so just like that so chain two three double crochets in two the same magic ring chain two and three more double crochets into the same magic ring 
So that will be the last group of three double crochets. And you should be having a total of four groups of three double crochets. We have this one, this one, this one, and this one. And each group is separated by a chain to space. So that means you're going to make a chain of two. And then you're going to grab this tail of the magic ring and you're going to pull it so that you close off the magic ring. And then you're going to slip stitch into the top chain of the first chain three of the round. So insert your hook, pull through all. So you can see your box already formed. This is called a granny square for those people who don't know. We are going to use the granny square stitch to do the middle section of our cardigan. So you're going to make a chain of three. This is round two. Turn your work and into the chain two space, which is this one. The chain of three counts as our very first double crochet. So you're going to still make two more double crochets into the chain two space to make a total of three double crochets since the chain three counts as a double crochet. Then make a chain of two and then three double crochets into the same chain two space. Just like that. So for this pattern, we shall call this a shell. A shell is three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. And then you're going to make a chain of one into the next chain two space. You're going to place a shell. So remember I told you a shell is three double crochets, chain two, and three more double crochets into the same space. And that's what we shall do in all corners unless stated otherwise. So just like that, you're going to make a chain of one and then into the chain two space, you're going to place a shell. So three double crochets, chain two and three more double crochets into the same space. Just like that. And then you're going to make a chain of one into the chain to space, you're going to place a shell. So three double crochets, chain two, and three more double crochets into the same space. All right, so this is what you should have. And at this point, you're going to make a chain of one and slip stitch into the top chain of the first chain three of the round. Another thing that you should note is we are always working in the opposite direction of the previous round. So slip stitch into the top chain of the first chain three of the round. And this is what you're going to have. So let's go on to round three. Round three, you're going to start the same exact way. Make a chain of three and turn your work. So remember, this is a chain one space. The chain two spaces are only found in the corners of the square. The chain one spaces are found along the sides of the square, but not in the corners. So chain one spaces get three double crochets. And since the first chain three of the round counts as a double crochet, you're going to place two more double crochets into the chain one space here. So one and two. So that's a total of three double crochets since the chain three counts as a stitch. After this, you're going to make a chain of one and then this is a chain two space and each chain two space or each corner gets a shell and a shell is three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets so after this you're going to make a chain of one and this is a chain one space and for each chain one space you only place three double crochets so you're going to go all the way around doing this now that you know exactly what to place at different points but make sure every after a shell or every after three double crochets you make a chain of one so just remember that so this is a chain two space and it will get a shell so three double crochets chain two and three more double crochets chain one into the chain one space you're going to place three double crochets chain one into the chain two space you're going to place three double crochets chain two 
and three more double crochets. Chain one, into the chain one space, you're going to place three double crochets. All right, after that, you're going to make a chain of one, into the chain two space, you're going to place a shell. So the shells are only found in the corners. And I think by now, you can be ready to take on this project. So after round three, after your very last shell, you're going to make a chain of one and then slip stitch into the top chain of the first chain three of the round. So insert your hook, pull through all, yarn over pull through all, just like that. So what determines what you're going to place is the chain from the round before. If it's a chain one space, you only place three double crochets. If it's a chain two space, you place a shell because that will be at the corners of the granny square. So you're going to keep building your work until one side of the granny square. Okay. Until one side of the granny square is the length you're going to stretch out your arms like a cross like as if you're making uh, a cross so stretch out your arms and make sure from here to here here your elbow to elbow measurement when your hands are stretched outwards that's the length that you want to make for your cardigan so for your granny square because this is the first part of the cardigan and for me uh i will let you know how many rounds that i'll have done for the granny square in the next clip but that's one thing that you should consider or i will be recommending specific number of rounds for the particular sizes the different sizes of the cardigan all right guys so we ended up making a total of 32 rounds for the granny square and your granny square must have grown so much and uh i want to take a measurement for you guys for one side of the granny square so that we can know the measurement that i ended up getting so one side of my granny square is 40 inches and since it's a square all sides should be the same so we are going to work in increments of three rows so for size small i did a total of 32 rows or rounds and uh, now for medium you will consider 35 large 38 uh, extra large 41 in increments of three three so that your granny square can be bigger so we are going on to our next round and this one is going to be different it's going to edge the boundary of the granny square so what we are going to do is make a chain of three which counts as our very first double crochet turn your work all right the granny square is really big so um the chain of three is attached to this stitch here so into the chain one space you will place a double crochet and then double crochet in each and every stitch so what we are doing here is one double crochet in each stitch and one double crochet in each chain one space so the pattern has changed a little bit this is a round of double crochets and continue to do this until you get to the corner and i show you i will show you how to work on the corners Don't forget one double crochet in each stitch and one double crochet in each chain one space. All right, now we are getting to the corner and I'm placing my very last double crochet into the stitch before the chain two space. So into the chain two space, you will place one double crochet 
chain one and one more double crochet into the same space actually let me make it two so into the chain two space you're going to place two double crochets chain two and two more double crochets and then we are going to go back to this pattern the one of one double crochet in each stitch and one double crochet in each chain one space all the way around when you get to the corners you place two double crochets chain two and two more double crochets into the corner or the chain two space at the corner so go all the way around and i'll meet you back at the beginning of your round all right guys so we are coming to the end of the round and i'm placing my last double crochet into the last stitch there and i'll slip stitch into the top chain of the first chain three of the round pull through and then i'll chain one and cut my yarn at this time we are done with the granny square bit and now we are going to do the shaping of the cocoon cardigan so look how big it is it's going to make a very beautiful design in the end so at this point you can go ahead and weave in all your ends or the tails that are lying around your piece because you are now going to assemble each and everything to turn the square into a functional piece all right guys so um we are premiering a video right now by the way so that is for the olive top if you guys haven't yet checked it out please make sure you check it out on my page so what you're going to do right now is to fold your work so the side that has the final round that's the right side of your work so turn your work onto the wrong side and fold it into half so i don't know how to demonstrate this without like the piece is very big so i'll demonstrate this with a piece of paper so i'm imagining this is our granny square you're going to fold it into half just like this just like that so from a square into a rectangle like that that's what we are going to do right now to folding your work into two into half uh let's bring back our example so once you fold over your work like this we are now going to sew the, the sides up to around this level something like that so you're going to sew from this corner all the way up until we leave those little spaces we're not going to sew up entirely we're going to sew from the bottom here all the way up until we have a specific number of stitches left so let me say we stop here this is going to provide the the opening for the arms to pass through so let's do that you're going to either use a darning needle or you can use your crochet hook i am going to use my crochet hook to do that part and uh, you're going to just uh, place your work like this so this side where uh, the piece opens that's where we're going to start from in the chain two space and we're going to single crochet all the way across until we have a few stitches left for the hands so we're going to have to make sure that we take note of the number of stitches that we do on one side so that we just do the same exact thing on the other side because this is an identical piece on both ends so you're going to attach your yarn into the chain two space on the corner and we are going to go into stitch to stitch and placing a single crochet so one stitch on this side and one stitch on the other side single crochet all the way across until so i'll let you know how many stitches that i'll have done for for my sweater so i'm counting these single crochet stitches so that i just do the same exact thing on the other side because it has to be a mirror of this side 
of what we do on this side. Alright guys, so instead of counting the single crochet stitches, I just counted the number of stitches that I uh, I left unworked around the sleeve area. So this is supposed to be this, this opening here. So if, if the client has a bigger arm, then you're going to consider more stitches, leaving out more stitches. But the fact that I already know the size that I'm working with, which is a small, I have left a total of 33 stitches unworked. And this should be perfectly fine for a small size something like this and when we put the ribbing it is going to tighten up a little bit to hold this area very well so um, the moment you're done with this you're going to turn your work onto the right side so get your ball of yarn or balls of yarn if you're using two strands and put them onto the right side of your work and this is what the right side looks like so you can see the seam line that we just created so after this uh, you're going to put back your hook into that loop the loop of the very the seam line and then we are going to continue working the ribbing around that hole that we've left behind so you're going to just make a chain of three and then into the next stitch, you're going to place a front post double crochet and then a back post double crochet into the next stitch. All right, front post double crochet into the next stitch, back post double crochet into the next, just like that. So repeat that all the way around. So what we are doing right now is working on the sleeve of the cardigan front post and back post double crochet so this is going to create a ribbing so you can see the ribbing has already started forming that ribbing is going to be around the sleeve and it's also going to give us something that's a little bit stretchy or holds around the sleeve perfectly well All right, so we're coming to the end of the round and I'm placing a back post double crochet into the very last stitch. I don't know whether I should consider this as a stitch, but I think I should so that we don't create a very big gap. So after your last stitch, you're going to slip stitch on top of the chain three at the beginning of the round. And then we're going to make a chain of three and front post double crochet in each front post double crochet back post double crochet in each back post double crochet just to keep the ribbing in line so just keep working around and around until you get the thickness of the ribbing that you want we are just going to repeat this round i think i will do a total of i think three rounds for mine and i've already worked my first round this is the second round and i'll do one more round just placing one front post in each front post and one back post double crochet in each back post double crochet so that the ribbing is a little bit thick so you can see here so keep doing that and i'll meet you back when the very first ribbing of the first sleeve is done All right, guys, this is what three rounds look like. So you can go ahead and make a total of five rounds, but I think more than five would be extremely 
many so just gauge between three and five rounds of the sleeve area so for me i'll stop at three and i'll chain one cut my yarn so we're going to repeat the same exact process that we've done on this side onto the opposite side so remember let me just take you through briefly so that you can remember what we did you're going to turn your work onto the wrong side where we're going to uh, seam up the sides of the cardigan so just turn your work onto the wrong side like this and then go to this side that's still open like this and then you're going to go to this side from the corner the chain to space you're going to join until you have a specific number of stitches unworked for my case that was 33 stitches so i'll join until i have a total of 33 stitches not joined and then you turn your work onto the right side and do the ribbing around the sleeve opening so if you don't remember how to do that just rewind the video and get back to the very first sleeve shaping and then i'll meet you back when both the sides are finished all right guys after both the sleeves you should have something that looks like this on one side and then the same exact thing happening on this other side i'll be attaching a video for you guys to enjoy for now that's what you should have for your cardigan now we are going on to the final step which is to uh, create that kind of addition for the edge of the cardigan so what we are going to do is work rounds of double crochet around and around and around until we get the thickness of that edging that we want so what you're going to do is you see that circular shape around the opening you're going to just attach your yarn in any stitch at this point you're going to attach in any double crochet stitch or are you saying where the two panels met where we have the seam line on the side you're going to go into the chain one space where we join the two panels and you're going to attach your yarn chain three which counts as our very first double crochet and now you're going to just go all the way around placing one double crochet in each double crochet so one double crochet in each double crochet around when you make it all the way back i can't show all this on camera but you're going to go around the opening of the cardigan and then until you get here into the very last stitch and you'll slip stitch into the top chain of the first chain three of the round chain three turn your work one double crochet in each stitch so we're just going to keep working back and forth back and forth and i'll let you know how many rounds that i'll do for my cardigan in the end Put a button here maybe that will also 